The Nintendo Switch has a ton of great games such as Mario, Zelda, Pokemon, Animal Crossing, and the list just goes on and on. They've just been doing a phenomenal job with the Switch, but it's not always easy finding the best games available on the Nintendo eShop in specific. Unfortunately, a lot of games that do deserve more attention gets buried within the eShop, and that really is a travesty. Well, that's why I'm here to shine some light on 15 hidden gems that you can grab on the Nintendo Switch right now. I actually made a list like this last year as well, but in order to keep this list fresh, I chose 15 completely different games, but I would encourage you to watch that video as well for even more hidden gems. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below, but as always, the games I choose are only my opinion. And if you do think a game deserves to be on this list, make sure to let me and others know in the comments below. That helps me and others find even more great games, but other than that, let's get right into the list. And to start things off, I have Ginny LeClue. This is a game that I ran into recently as the art style really drew me in. The presentation itself is just absolutely fantastic, and I love the art style in this game with its bright and vibrant colors. It also has a lot of personality and charm. The game is actually about an author who is writing a murder mystery about Ginny LeClue, so you're playing the game as he writes out the story for the character you play as. This also allows you to make some decisions that affects the overall story. After all, this is kind of like a point-and-click adventure type game with some light puzzles along the way. It's not necessarily a very difficult game per se, but it's the story and its characters where this game truly shines. If any of that interests you, then Ginny LeClue is definitely one that you might want to check out. Next up, I have the retro-inspired Hotshot Racing. If you grew up playing games like Virtual Racing, this game will immediately grab your attention for its polygon-inspired art style. Of course, we've seen plenty of games mimic pixel art, but this is an art style we don't usually see in modern games, and I think it looks great myself. It's very refreshing to say the very least. The thing is, it's also a really fun arcade-style racer. There's plenty of game modes to play around with such as Grand Prix, Cops vs. Robbers, as well as some others, and the driving mechanics are both fun and responsive. You got your drift mechanics, boosts, and different racers to mix up the fun. I have to say, I think this is one of the better racing games that I've played here recently. Now, if you're looking more for a good turn-based RPG, Operency is the way to go. This is an old-school turn-based dungeon crawler, and a very good one at that. It's all set in first person, and each dungeon in this game is both highly creative and diverse. It was an absolute treat as you go to each level to see a new setting in its fantasy world. The movement, though, is a little different. Even though you play in first person, you still move in a grid-based pattern, and not everybody likes that. It's a bit different, but once you get used to it, it works fine. Each dungeon also has several puzzles to solve, some of which are quite clever. It did take me some time to solve several of its more difficult puzzles. I like that aspect personally, and it keeps the gameplay from going stale. The combat, though, is excellent, and how you level up your characters and abilities. The story is even good with its whimsical and charming characters as they banter back and forth. From top to bottom, I think this is a good game and definitely overlooked. AI The Somnium Files is an interesting game. This is actually a game developed by the creator of Zero Escape Virtua's Last Reward, and if you like that game, you know what you're getting yourself into with AI The Somnium Files. This is yet another visual novel type game, and with an excellent story with an interesting premise. You play as a detective who has a robotic-esque eye that has her own personality. This creates some very interesting dialogue and situations within the game. Where it gets really interesting, though, is that when investigating different suspects, you can dive into their mind to reveal different clues within their subconscious. It's all very strange, but has a highly entertaining story about a serial killer. Now, with that said, it does tend to over-sexualize things at times, and not everybody's gonna like that, but if you're okay with that type of stuff, then this is a must-play. Journey to the Savage Planet is one of the most unique and fun games I've played recently. Yes, I do think this game is highly underrated and definitely overlooked. It's almost like a big 3D Metroidvania type game with lots of platforming and things to constantly discover whether that be abilities or new life forms. You get thrown onto a savage, unexplored planet with very little resources, but the further you explore, the more capable you become. It's rather humorous at times and the world itself is fun for these reasons. I think it's well designed for both its gameplay and level design. 
I really did enjoy navigating its world and discovering new things, especially as I gained new abilities. A lot of that was because I really enjoyed the platforming in this game. We don't usually see 3D Metroidvania games like this, but Journey to the Savage Planet pulled it off in a big way. It also helps that you can play cooperatively with a friend in case you want to play with somebody else. Next up, I have Haven, and honestly, I would have liked to have ranked this one even higher. Unfortunately, it has been having some issues crashing on the Nintendo Switch, though I do expect that to be fixed soon. Definitely keep an eye on that, and if I hear anything, I will post an update in the comments below. With that said, this is still an excellent game, especially if you like good stories and characters. Unlike most games that have romance in it, from the very beginning you play as two characters who are already in a relationship, and this is a heavy theme throughout the entire game. They really have a strong bond and chemistry that not only motivates one another, but also annoys each other from time to time. Their relationship actually feels authentic to the point you do care for these characters and the journey they take. Now the gameplay is a little bit more relaxed though. It's not a very challenging game and I would explain it as kind of chill. You essentially go around collecting things such as food and then clean up some rust that runs across the ground with some turn-based battles thrown in as well. Like I said, it's not overly difficult, but I think when you combine all of its aspects, it makes for a great game. New Super Lucky's Tale was one that immediately hit home for me thanks to its inspiration from Nintendo 64 3D collectathon platformers. I grew up playing these type of games, and it's clear that New Super Lucky's Tale is a love letter to the past. It is a little on the easier side of things, but if you like old school 3D platformers, this has everything you want. It's got a well-designed mascot, tight platforming, fun and diverse levels, several different challenges, and loads of things to collect in order to progress. Coming from someone that really enjoys these type of games, I can assure you this is a blast from the past. Moon Remix RPG Adventure is one of the most unique games on this list. I don't usually include remasters on lists like this, but the original release back on the PlayStation 1 as a Japan-only title. So this is technically a new release for a lot of people, and it's still sadly not getting a lot of recognition, and that's too bad because this game is very special. People kind of explain Moon as an anti-RPG, and that does hold up. The reason is because while yes, the name has RPG in it, there's not actually any combat in it at all. Instead, you play as a character stuck inside a video game, spreading love throughout the world as the quote-unquote hero kind of ignores the well-being of all the NPCs and generally leaves a huge mess behind. As an example, what happens in an RPG when you slaughter all those monsters to level up? Well, in Moon, you play as the character that has to clean that mess up. It's amusing and it kind of makes you think of all the tropes that you're used to seeing in JRPGs. Now Moon is not going to be a game for everybody and it can be slower paced as you help different NPCs, but if you want something just a bit different, I would absolutely recommend Moon. Iconoclast is one of the most interesting Metroidvania games out right now thanks to its focus on story and puzzles. In a lot of games like this, it's more focused on combat, and while yes, there is plenty of combat in Iconoclast, it excels in other categories far more. In many ways, it actually felt like I was playing a JRPG at times because of how the story unfolds, and I say that in the best possible way. Iconoclast is an absolute joy to play. The art style is also very pleasing, the characters are great with a lot of personality, and it's just a fun game. It surprises me that The Last Campfire hasn't been talked about more. This is the next game developed by Hello Games, the same studio behind hit title No Man's Sky. The Last Campfire is a much smaller game in scope, but don't let that fool you because it's an experience you won't soon forget. This is a puzzle adventure game, and it's a beautiful game not only because of its art style, but also its journey and message. It is a little more somber and can be emotional, but when you mix everything together, this really is an experience that I think is worth having. Some games are just simply fun, and that's exactly what Cyber Shadow is. This is a throwback to old school action platformers, and while we have seen several of these in recent years, Cyber Shadow stands tall among the pack. It's a game that's simple on the surface, but leaves little room for error. The enemy placement and overall platforming can be pretty insane at times. It can be rather challenging as you rely on your platforming skills, trusty katana, and other abilities to dismantle your foes. Yeah, you're going to die in this game a lot, but it never feels cheap. 
In fact, you can even purchase special abilities at checkpoints in order to make an area just a little bit easier. You have to be smart about this though because that currency might be best used in an area further in the level. You have to be strategic in how you do this. That's an extra layer of fun for this game that I think is enjoyable. Cyber Shadow though gets a big thumbs up from me. Now this next one is one of the more emotionally driven games that you're going to play. Spiritfarer's premise is about death and moving on. Death is never an easy thing to deal with and Spiritfarer handles this situation very well. It's often bittersweet and as you help the different creatures move on to the afterlife, it's the bond that you build with each character that sticks in your mind long after you finish up the game. I know it looks cute on the surface with its animal-like creatures, but it does have a mature theme to it and its narrative is one that you won't forget anytime soon. Now beyond its narrative, I think it's a good game as well. It's a management sim and there are a lot of things to do within its wonderful world, whether it be fishing, platforming, or various other activities. If anything, it always keeps you entertained. Sock and a Rice of Ruin is a mix of several different genres. This is an action RPG, 2D platformer, and a farming simulator mixed into one great package. I know that sounds like an odd combination, but this game mixes it all together absolutely perfectly. The action part of this game, put simply, is excellent, especially the boss encounters. I could actually recommend Sock and a Rice of Ruin for its action-based gameplay all on its own, and that's one of the reasons this game is just so interesting. Farming, though, is a nice change of pace with its more relaxed nature. However, that's the thing. The farming aspect is just as in-depth as its combat, though there is a bigger learning curve when it comes to its farming. That's directly tied with the character development for the main character, and that's something to keep in mind as well. You do play as a rather bratty goddess, and she has to go through some serious personal growth throughout the game. By the end of this game, though, you really grow attached to the characters, so the story on top of everything else is really good as well. CrossCode was a brilliant surprise for me. This may be a smaller independent game, but it's a big RPG rivaling some of the all-time greats. Basically, CrossCode ties in its story to its gameplay perfectly. So essentially, you play as a character who's stuck in a virtual MMO world. The developer somehow managed to make a single-player game with NPCs feel like a living, breathing MMO and a really good one at that. It's kind of got a similar premise to Ready Player One or Sword Art Online, but the story itself is different and interesting enough to stand out. And then there's the gameplay that offers a lot of choice in how you build your character. As you level up, you can take several branching paths, and I have to say, the abilities are some of my favorites in games like this. It plays kind of similar to Trials of Mana, but it also has Zelda-esque dungeons with clever puzzles. That's quite the combination, and it works very well. I mean, this game just has layer after layer, and in every possible way, it's outstanding. If you haven't played this game, do yourself a favor and check CrossCode out. And at the number one spot, I have Bug Fables, and this has quickly become one of my favorite games released in recent years. Obviously, Bug Fables is heavily inspired by the classic Paper Mario games, and it's not just some poor clone. If you ask me, Bug Fables ranks right up there with the first two Paper Mario games that it's so heavily inspired by. It takes some of the classic mechanics such as medals to increase the power of your team, and the combat works well as you input unique commands to increase the strength of your attacks. It can also be challenging on hard difficulty, and I like that extra challenge. Even the story is charming as you'd expect from these games, and yeah, the story is actually really good. I think that's what surprised me the most about this game, but this is a legit RPG across the board, and a game that you shouldn't miss. Fans have been asking for a new classic Paper Mario game for years and years, and this right here is the game. I was truly blown away by Bug Fables, and it's quietly one of the best games out right now. Anyways though, that's it for this video, but if I missed any of your favorites, make sure to let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video though, make sure to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.